Hey guys, this is Jeremy. Welcome back to the Church Mac Unprogram series. If you don't know anything about the Unprogram series, you get five minutes to talk about any topic that you want about church tech, nerdiness, creativity. Anyways, let's get into it. So I wanna to talk to you guys about how not to fail at a new blog in five steps. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this from John Acuff. I've actually been thinking about this from a couple of different perspectives um, about people that have talked about failure and what that means. I know Bob Goff has a lot of different things. I'm thinking about maybe turning in this into a web series. I don't know, but as I've been letting it percolate for a little bit, five things came to mind. First of all, don't do it in the first place. Failure a lot of times is we have this expectation out here that we want to be able to meet and we're thinking and we're dreaming and we're fantasizing about these things that we're doing we're not rational in what it is we see other people do these things and we want to go do them but you know what you don't understand everything that's happening behind them it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of energy creativity a lot of effort and practice a lot of habits have been created a commitment to this process it doesn't mean that you don't have any of those things but do you have all of those things a lot of people see someone else do something well say i can do that as well and then they give up and move on. And so I first way not to fail is just not to do it at all. Now, that doesn't seem very practical. The best practicality I have comes actually from John Acuff in the sense of what happens if you just simply mull it over for a while. His version of this is he has a million ideas all at the same time. I'm an idea guy, I can relate to this process. And his response is, and before I even start thinking about how I'm gonna do it, I have to figure out how I'm gonna pitch it to my wife. And if she says no, I don't take it to heart. And I think it over. And then if I get excited again about it, she still says no, okay, we'll keep going with it. And then all of a sudden this excitement is continuing to boil over and she's told me no a couple different times, but I'm still at it. Then there's this mentality of, you know what, maybe you should go for something like that. Other times they encourage you right off the get-go and so you kind of run with it. But having these external forces for yourself, allowing just to marinate for quite a while, we get stuck in these initial exciting things that we could really do. I do this all the time. And so just let it marinate. Don't jump into it right away. If it's still exciting three months, six months later, which is a long time, can you imagine having this wonderful idea for doing a perfect blog that nobody else is doing, saying, you know what? I'm gonna sit on this for six months before I even think about starting to do this. Kind of a scary thing, but if it's still exciting six months later as opposed to right now, why not go for it? The second idea is as far as not failing at doing a blog is why not practice with a different blog? And if you have this mentality of, you know what, I wanna do just like Church Mag and post at least two times a day, have long form content video out there, we're just going to do everything possible, why not practice at half scale on someone else's blog? And so this idea of trying it out, you don't have to set it up, you don't have to worry about the cost of anything, you don't have to worry about advertising and social media and this and that. Go to someone else's blog and say, you know what, can I just, maybe it's intern, maybe it's just simply get paid a little bit of money to see what that's like, however you wanna go about it and just say, I can commit two months to you. If you give me two months, I will just write content that I think is gonna be great at this capacity. And so you go for it and you try it out on their blog. And first of all, you're building an audience. Second of all, you're building an advocate in the person that you're doing this for. And third, you're getting to see what that's like for yourself. And so it's not that you're just putting your toe in the water because you're going at half speed. And so if you expect to do all the social media for yourself, then you should be doing at least half that amount of social media for yourself there. But don't necessarily expect to go all in for everything for yourself and expect to have this amazing success. The third thing that I want to share with you is shoot for the moon, but figure out how to take steps to get to that moon. And I don't mean little tiny small steps, that 1% idea that I told you about. I mean make them challenging steps, but don't expect to hit the moon on your first shot. In fact, I would say shoot past the moon, but expect to take step after step. NASA did not get to the moon in its very first launch attempt. They were launching satellite after satellite before then. And yes, they were using technology that, how in the world did they get there? It amazes me that they got there because the power in my cell phone is not, 
is more powerful than most of the computers they used. They used their wits, they used their ingenuity, but they didn't just shoot for the moon that first time. They had a lot of experiments in that process, so I encourage you to do the same thing. Test it out, take steps to get to that point. If you wanna go for a blog that has all the bells and whistles, amazing. But why not just set up a WordPress site that does not have a URL that you're not putting a cost and you're not paying for the hosting and just simply blog and develop your audience and have this theme and create your persona and go for that. That's step three. Number four, do it in community. This idea of being able to go and blog is amazing, but it just is so lonely at times. I encourage you, I encourage you to go into it with community to be able to have this place where you can ask people, maybe get a mentor or a coach. I know that there's a lot of mentors, coaches. I would love to do it. Probably don't want to ask me how much I'm going to charge, but there's other people, a lot of church communicators out there that do a great job. And I can point you to those places if you want to ask. The fifth thing is be okay with failure if it happens. So I know that this is five ways of how not to fail, but what happens if you tweak the idea of what failure meant? And so the idea of I need to have this blog up is a little bit different than saying I think that God is leading me to be able to minister to people online or digitally or have this idea. And right now I think that that best way might be to do it via blog. And then you fail at that in the sense that it did not work out. But what happens if you tweak that and say, you know what, the blog did not work, but I realized that I'm really great at uh, video or I'm really great at doing Snapchat whenever I was doing my marketing. All of a sudden it's not a failure, but you found a new area that is going to absolutely be successful. So tweak that idea, that expectation for yourself. Five ideas on how not to fail for your blog in the first 60 days. I think that's a great idea. So tell me what you guys think as far as these steps. Do you have any other steps that you might recommend to not fail in this process as well? I'd love to hear them. Leave them down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.